This Russian journalist could not make this kind of program in his own country. Вообще диктатура, как ни странно, плохо воюет. Вот казалось бы, диктатура это такая вещь, где все подчиняются одному человеку. У него есть в его голове какой-то план. Soon after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Moscow introduced prison sentences for anyone spreading what they considered to be false information. To avoid this type of censorship, Kirill Martinov had to leave for Riga in Latvia at short notice. So it was it was clear, you know, if you want to have some opportunities to to fight in 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 terms of your profession, you have to make decisions quickly. We understand why, what kind of uh, pure evil we are facing on the side of President Putin. He's editor in chief of Novaya Gazeta, a well-known independent Russian newspaper. About 30 journalists came with him to establish a new version of the publication. So this place is the editorial office uh, of a Latvian organization, Riga Svilni, and we are renting a space here, so this is the new home for our Nova Gazeta Europe. The objective of the editorial team, to keep Russians informed from abroad. An article like that uh, could not have been published uh, on a Russian website at the moment. We cannot call this war a war. We need to call it a special military operation. We still have uh, people in Russia who work with us. Of course, we are very careful uh, when dealing with people from Russia. Since the beginning of the Russian invasion in Ukraine, Latvia has granted hundreds of visas to journalists fleeing Russia. Hundreds of Russian intellectuals have also gone into exile. Many of them are now living in Jomala, west of Riga. Ironically, this seaside town was popular with the Russian elite when Latvia was a Soviet republic. Elena Lukianova has settled full-time into her second home. This Russian professor of constitutional law was in shock when the invasion of Ukraine began. I forgot that Moscow existed. It's been hard to realize that your country, which overcame fascism, is capable of starting such a terrible war, of committing such a heinous crime. To teach freely, she and other opponents to the regime have been offering free online classes for about two years. She says that since February, thousands of students have signed up. A soldier has his gun, a journalist has his pen, a teacher can teach, that is our weapon. Latvia has also welcomed the largest number of Ukrainian refugees in proportion to its own population. Over 45,000 Ukrainians have obtained a visa since February last year, the equivalent of 2.4% of the population. Tonya is one of them. She fled from Odessa with her family last March. She's supporting her country with a local NGO. We are making candles for the army, for Ukrainian. Uh, for this time, we um, made about uh, 40,000. Candles, but also food, medicine and warm clothes. The association sends several tons of humanitarian boxes every week. By volunteering, Tonya is participating in the war in her own way. Russia and Vladimir Putin, they stole our lives and our future and our plans. He is a very dangerous person, not only for Ukrainian, but all over the world. The association was quick to start supporting both the army and civilians. Less than a week after the large-scale invasion of Ukraine, they found this warehouse. We don't need that much. Almost one year later, we are here. We need a bigger place. For the most of us that uh, fight, that Ukrainians are fighting now, it's not only their fight, it's our fight uh, also. Conflict is a reminder of the Soviet occupation of Latvia that lasted until 1991. Since May 2022, the government has been removing symbolic reminders of this painful part of their history. The main obelisk dedicated to Red Army have been removed previous summer. There used to be a colossal 79 metre high stone monument behind this fence. These monuments are not historical, they are ideological. Russian attack on Kiev cha changed uh, public attention, changed uh, Western European uh, perception, not only of uh, current events, but also on uh, Russian narratives. 
Hundreds of monuments have been torn down throughout the country. Only a few symbols remain, like this hammer and sickle. Few of these symbols in Riga city have remained still, but they are in the process of removal. A political move which has not been welcomed by part of the Russian-speaking community, which represents over a third of the population. Some members of the community remain close to Russia. Nonetheless, this antipathy towards Vladimir Putin allows Latvia to turn the page on their Soviet past.